Mr. Johnny Shoe. Welcome to another edition of New the Newberry Challenge. I'm going to talk 1956 Newberry winning book, Carry On, Mr. Bodich. And Mr. Shoe, this book was awesome, mostly. Uh, I was really into it. I was really digging uh, Mr. Bodich and how he was uh, just such a cool guy and he was just always wanting to learn things and wanted, he wanted to learn Latin or he wanted to go to Harvard, so he tried to learn Latin and then he was around some other people, so he tried to learn Spanish and French and did, did some really awesome things with navigation, some really world-changing things, and I found that very interesting, but I could only stay really interested for about 200 pages, and then Mr. Shu at the end, I just kind of tried to, to finish the book. Uh, everything bad happened. It seemed like everyone died, so if you haven't read this book, pretty much everyone dies. Uh, almost everyone that this man like cares about it all they all die and it's I think it's kind of based on a pretty much a true story so very depressing uh, world for Nat Bowditch um, but really great book I think kids might actually like it if they're really into boats and navigation and math maybe they will really like it uh, but Mr. Sh I have some special guests today so I'm actually going to turn it over to them I'm gonna go down the slide so maybe that will look really awesome on the video uh, Mr. Shu so uh, turning it over to the uh, someone from Seattle Washington <laughs> Mr. Shu, I'm Shannon Houghton, and I'm super excited to be in Michigan this summer and hanging out at Colby's Place. Um, I wanted to share with you the second book in the Incorrigible Children of Ashton Place series. It's called The Hidden Gallery, and now I lost it. I lost it. Oh no. I can't see in the sun. Anyway. The Hidden Gallery, the second book by Mary Rose Wood in The Incorrigible Children of Ashton Place. In it, um, Penelope Lumley and the three incorrigible children head on out to London while their house is repaired. Um, it's Honestly, The Incorrigible Children is my favorite series that I have read in a very long time. Uh, I read the second and third one right one after another, and I can't wait to see if there's another one coming out. Um, you meet a couple of new characters in this one, and you also have a chance to, um, to see more of Natsobu, which is my favorite character from the first book. Um, so anyway, Incorrigible Children of Ashton Place, and if you live in Washington, um, the first book in the series is nominated for either a Young Reader's Choice Award or a Sasquatch Award, so you should totally check it out. What's so, the Sasquatch Award? Farewell! Oh, the Sasquatch Award is like whatever the blue, like whatever the Michigan Award is for Best Book or Illinois Award for Best Book, like the Blue Ribbon Books or whatever, Blue Bell. I would much rather win the Sasquatch Award than okay, just yeah. about any other award. You know, That's awesome. Well, Washington's pretty rad like that. So anyway, bye, Mr. Yeah, Shue. Awesome. Hi, Mr. Shue. Uh, it's Erica Beaton, and I am here to share with you Almost Astronauts, 13 Women Who Dared to Dream. This book was fascinating. I am an English and a history teacher, and so the history side of it was really cool, but the science aspect was great. Um, some people know the story of the Mercury 7. They're the first um, seven male astronauts uh, when we were first pioneering our way up into space. But this talks about the 13 women that were tested to see if they would be better astronauts. So it goes through the different tests that the astronauts had to take during the 60s, like isolation tests where the men all hallucinated and went crazy, and the women just found it this very peaceful experience, which was really fascinating. So it tells the story of those 13 women along with a very interesting villain. So that's Almost Astronauts, 13 Women Who Dared to Dream by Tanya Lee Stone. Awesome. Hi, Mr. Shu. I'm Nikki Barnes, and I'm going to be talking about the book One for the Murphys by Linda Hunt, and um, she's on Twitter. She's an awesome author and very friendly, and the reason I love this book is because it's about a 12-year-old named Carly, and she is suddenly ends up in foster care because there's an incident with her mom and her father-in-law, and um, it's just a great book. Wonderful writing. You will love it. Please have tissues handy because it is very sad, but Awesome writing. Come on over here, my Come on lovely over. wife, the videographer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are, absolutely. Okay. We can scrunch. It's uh -huh. good. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Shu, from another wonderful nerdy book club meetup here, well, the first one at my home, uh, I'd like to thank uh, all of my friends for joining us and bringing food. <laughs> so, uh, from the capital of Nerdy Book Club, Michigan, the uh, Nerdy Book Club Yay. state Yay. is the capital. Yes. And, uh, we would like to thank you um, all for watching our video. Uh, have a great day. And wait, 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 wait! No, you, you. 
You left out the best part of 1956. <laughs> okay. One Ryan of our wants to get this in. <laughs> one of our absolute favorite authors, the person who brought us the one and only Ivan, born in 1956, best year ever. So Yay! what we learned today is Ryan has no problem with announcing a lady's age, which is awesome. <laughs> and two weeks in a row, uh, Brian with an awesome new very thing for us. So started with the book he didn't read, and then <laughs> so Mr. Shu from Albany, Michigan, Johnny Shu, have a great day and happy reading. Woo! Farewell. <laughs>